this is very serious and everybody needs to take it serious. Um, I've been continuing to talk to not only to our medical facilities, but uh, when it comes to our schools and others. But one thing we have been doing in Washington, especially working with the Center for Disease and Control and National Institute of Health, we're learning something new about this virus every single day. And uh, there are some positive things that are happening, but this is very contagious. That's why people have to separate themselves. We want to make sure that we don't overwhelm our medical facilities. That's why you want to separate, um, and that's why it's so important. I think the next four weeks are critical for how we get through this. But we've been in Congress. We've passed two different bills. One was a supplemental, put $8 billion for testing, for treatment, and also for telemedicine. So you don't have to leave the house. You can use your phone so you're not getting anybody else affected with the disease or others. Then on our next bill that we passed through, we want to make sure we took care of people and small businesses, providing resources to them to make sure they stay employed because government is having a number of businesses shut down, and that's hard. They need liquidity to continue to pay their rent or keep employees employed, so we're providing resources to them. The next thing is we'll be working on another bill this week in the Senate, next week in the House, there will be a much larger bill to deal with uh, small businesses, large businesses, and individuals. There's an ability for government to help those individuals. It will be means tested for those who have resources so they won't need it, but those who do not have it will be able to help them. I'm glad you brought up both of those um, bills. So th that's people right here in Kern County that can apply for some of that relief, but when they apply and they get it approved, how soon can they actually see that? They can see it instantaneously. What we can do for small businesses, we can give them an advance because small businesses pay in for their employee tax every couple days. Well, they can be advanced that back um, to help in the process. The other element that the, we're talking about using in the new bill, you have direct deposit, especially with the people dealing with taxes. Now we have extended, so people do not have to pay their taxes on April 15th. They get 90 days interest-free. Um, there's ability where we can provide government could do guarantees for small small businesses loan bridges so they can get past these next 90 days have the liquidity to stay open pay their rent and pay their employees now I want to talk about the national state of emergency the state of emergency and then I know Kern County has declared a local emergency here now to a lot of people that can sound scary but what it also does is open opens up for funding so what is that money? How much do we get, and where does it go? Well, that is released, a lot of that, through the state. And the one thing you do when you have a national emergency, it allows FEMA and others to provide resources you haven't had before. One thing all your viewers have to understand, we have done a number of things to prepare for this long before we knew this the virus was coming. Uh, in the last five years, we have increased the funding for the Centers for Disease and Control and NIH by almost 40%. We actually created a new department, the Infectious Disease Rapid Response Fund and a national stockpile. These are places that they'd have other ventilators. These are places that would have more surgical masks. In the bill that we just passed in the House that passed the Senate today, it will allow companies to build industrial surgical masks that, that can be utilized in medical facilities but didn't have the – we needed to waive some regulations to allow that. So that adds millions of more masks into the system for our medical units to be able to use. So you'll start seeing more of this put out. Now, some of these resources will go to the places that need it most. If you look to Washington and to New York, where there is epicenter where the virus has, has taken a hold, you want to be able to combat that area so it doesn't expand. But now we have somebody who has contacted it in every single state when West Virginia just had another positive. We have moved forward when it came to testing. And when we have dealt with these problems before, like the SARS, it took us two years before we were in a clinical trial for a vaccine. I'm, I'm proud to say that we have a company right now in a clinical trial for a vaccine when it comes to coronavirus. It is already being injected into individuals who are in Washington State. It will take us about a year to do the test all the way through. But I believe with the ingenuity of this country with the, our private sector as well you have companies that have amazing scientists and Gilead and others that have a, a therapy to treat um, if you get this disease as well 
How do you think Bakersfield and Kern County are handling this, like in comparison, maybe if you had to give them a grade or look at the steps that they've taken, how do you think they're uh, doing? They're doing well right now, but you cannot sit back on your laurels. Because the one thing we found, if one person can come in and um, make a number of people, because it's so contagious, providing them the virus, and it can grow rapidly. If you watched in New York, it came from one synagogue. If you watched in Washington, it was in one um, uh, home care facility. They had almost more than 30 deaths in that home care facility. So we really need to take the lessons that we looked from Italy and others, from South Korea, and, and apply them for those that places they did it wrong, let's do it right here. But you do not want to have something so quickly come upon us so we cannot be quiet. Um, I think the steps we are taking are very smart, what the county has done, what the school districts have done, the medical facilities, preparing them, because it can change in one or two days very rapidly. Do you have any opinion on um, the city of Bakersfield not declaring a local emergency yet? You know, I, I let them to make their judgment. Uh, one thing I know is you need to monitor, monitor this day by day, because uh, you may feel very good one day, but the numbers can be different the next, and they start multiplying rather rapidly. So you'd have to have your plan and your measures, what measures you would do if, if it reaches a certain level. I believe the city has been preparing for that. I know that we have been talking to the public health facilities. We've been talking to uh, the nonprofits. We've been talking to the hospitals as well, giving them the best guidance. I had the deputy of um, CDC on a line with a, just a week or so ago, conference calling with all the individuals providing whatever information we can. And the one thing we will know is it changes and we learn more every single day about the virus. So last week the president said Democrats were inflaming the coronavirus situation. Does he still feel that way? I think the president has taken this very serious. Uh, the one thing that we should always do, I know the administration has come down early to brief uh, the House as early as back in January and February. Um, it, it, some of it fell on del deaf ears because they were dealing with other items. Uh, the president early on banned the flights from China. We found that that has been very helpful to where we would be in America today. The World Health Organization says the epicenter is in Europe. They did not ban those flights early enough. So it's not something anybody should ignore. We should take these guidance seriously. You should be washing your hands. Um, you should be sanitizing anything that somebody touches. You should be distancing yourself from one another, um, especially if you come into an age group that is concerning, 60 or older. If somebody has been a smoker or has lung issues as well, especially when we look to Kern County, we know there's been a lot of individuals with lung issues, be it asthma, be it valley fever and others. We should be considerate. As a community, we should think about this. We know that most of these small businesses have um, have either closed or have to do food on takeout. We could be we could be ordering online gift cards from these small businesses, so they can stay afloat, and we can come back there and and use that money later. The other thing we could do we could be checking on our loved ones, maybe dropping off. There's a lot of elderly people that live alone. You could call them, check in on them, and that's the thing about Americans. We the very best of us come together in situations like this. So uh, another one, one more quick thing I want to touch on on whether or not it's uh, being politicized still. Uh, I know in recent weeks you were criticized for calling COVID-19 the Chinese coronavirus. Has your position changed on calling it that in that uh, your response? You also mentioned the Democrats uh, flaring that up as well. Look, uh, if, if you wanted to go through there, I guess you'd be upset with CNN or you'd be upset with the Democratic Party that had a Wuhan virus a public hearing inside Congress or the New York Times or the Sacramento Bee. I don't think when we look at this virus and you look at all of them in the past of what they're called, I think we ought to look at how we protect the health of every individual. What I'm very upset about is China not opening up from the very beginning President Trump asked to send our scientists, our doctors, and our very best researchers there to help contain this just to be in China. President Xi denied the ability to go there, and now it has spread. They denied it even happening. Even the, the doctor inside China who warned them, we no longer can talk to that individual. We don't know where that individual is. That cover-up has made the rest of the world's health deteriorate beyond. China has a real problem of what they did to the rest of the world. And for China to stand up and say that American military to try to put a hoax that we created this, 
That is unacceptable. That is the problem of why this disease is around the world. And I don't think anybody should back away from that. But the first thing we should do is make sure the health of all Americans around this world that we are able to protect. Uh, one final question, just to be respectful of your time here. What do you say to people where, in one breath, we're, we're saying, you know, just stay calm, protect yourself, follow the precautions, but then they're also hearing that the National Guard is being mobilized. What is your message to them? Well, my, my, we will get through this. There has been bigger challenges in America, and we've always come together. We have always come out stronger. Let's work together. Let's not find things that divide us. Let's find things that unite us. In this type of situation, the one thing I will tell you, Mercy, grace for one another will get us through this. Let's be smart. Let's wash our hands. Let's listen to what individuals can tell us the best way to treat this, and we will get through this in a short amount of time, hopefully, uh, if we do all the right measurements. Okay, and, and I'm so sorry. I said that was my last question, but I do have um, That's okay. something being told to me now. Um, it looks like uh, one of the Congress members tested positive for coronavirus, um, uh, uh, Representative Mario diaz Ballard, um, have you heard anything about this? And also, how are you protecting yourself and keeping yourself safe? Have you been tested? Yeah, so I, I'm in Bakersfield right now. Mario, uh, I've been advised earlier today, tested positive for um, coronavirus. He is in uh, back home in, in Miami. Um, I was not around him at the time that he was contagious. There could be a couple other members. They'd be... Um, self-quarantined. We've had a staffer. We've had a Senate staffer that have tested. Just as you see across this country, we're taking the same precautions that we ask everybody else to take. All right, Congressman. Thank you very much. Anything I didn't ask you that you would like to say? No, I thought you did great. All right. Take care. Thank you very much for your time. We appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. Bye. -bye.